Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the triangle congruency theorems. I'm talking about SSS, SAS, AAS, ASA, and HL. So if you've heard of these before, you probably know what they stand for. If you don't, that's what the purpose of this video is. So first I want to talk about congruent triangles and what it means for a triangle to be congruent. When two triangles are congruent, it means that they have all of the same side lengths and angles. So let me just make up some random numbers here. So as we can see, all the side lengths are equal. And I'm also saying that the angles need to be equal to each other as well. And so there, since all of my angles and my sides are equal to each other, these two triangles are congruent. Equally true, I can take this same triangle and I can turn it around, or I can flip it upside down, or I can do anything I want, it's still congruent as long as it has the same side lengths and the same angles. Now one thing we notice is that it's inconvenient to find all of the side lengths and all of the angles, especially because most problems are not gonna give us all the side lengths and all the angles. So one thing that we discovered in geometry is that you don't need to prove all six. You just need to prove certain things in order to prove that the triangles are congruent. So for instance, the first triangle congruency theorem I'll talk about today is the side, side, side theorem, which we always call SSS for short. And what that basically means is that if I have two triangles and their side lengths are all the same, then we can say by SSS, these two triangles are congruent, and therefore I automatically know that all the angles will be equal to each other too. But what's most important is that we just say they're congruent. So that's one of the theorems. Another theorem is called side angle side, or SAS for short. That would be like this example right here, where I have a side, an angle in the middle, and then another side here. And as you can see, I have side, angle, and then side. And then if I have a matching side angle, and side on the other triangle, then automatically the two triangles are congruent by SAS theorem, we say. Then there's three more to go. Next we'll have angle, angle side, or AAS. And that would look like this, for instance, where I say 15 degrees there, 100 degrees here, and then maybe this side is four or something. But you'll notice I have angle, angle, and then side, in that order. And then on the other one, I just need to match it up. Even though it's flipped around, it doesn't matter. 15, 100, and then four. And there, now the two triangles are congruent by AAS. The next one very similar to that is angle side angle, or ASA. And that would be something like this, where I need two angles. Let's say this one and this one and then I need the side in between them, so maybe that's two. And again, I just match it up to the same angles and the same sides on the other triangle, and that's ASA. And then the last one we have is called hypotenuse leg, or HL for short, and you need to know that this one only works with right triangles. In other words, the triangle needs to have a right angle in order to use hypotenuse leg. For all of the other triangle congruency theorems, it does not need to be a right angle, it's optional. But let's say I have these two triangles here. They're both right triangles, as you can see. And I need the hypotenuses to match. So maybe that's like 10 here and 10 here for the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is always the longest side and it's across from the right angle. And then leg, it doesn't matter which leg it is, it just has to be one of them. So for instance, maybe I say this leg is six and this leg is six, and that's all I need to prove that the two triangles are congruent. Now, last thing I wanna say is there are two combinations we have not said yet, and that's because they are not congruent. The first one is angle, 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 and that's because even if my triangles all have the same angles corresponding in their similar spots, even if all the angles are matching, the side lengths can still be different. In other words, this could be four, and that might only be two. 
and now it's not matching, it's like double. So that's why angle, angle, angle is not congruent. In another video where I talk about similar triangles, we would say that they're similar, but that's getting ahead of ourselves for right now. The other triangles that are not congruent is SSA, side, side, angle. Now this one's more complicated to prove. It's not as straightforward as angle, angle, angle. So I'm just gonna tell you, take my word for it, SSA is not congruent, and there's an easy way to remember that, because what's SSA spelt backwards? That's right, it's a bad word. So if you ever have a bad word as your triangle congruency theorem, it means that we made a mistake. You cannot have SSA or the other word, if you know what I mean. So now let's look at some examples in action. I'm gonna give you two triangles, and you just have to tell me if they're congruent or not, and I am gonna try and trick you by drawing them a little rotated or flipped or whatever. So this is triangle A, B, C, and this is triangle X, Y, Z. And I'm gonna tell you that these sides are matching. Angle A is gonna match angle Z, and this side is going to match this side. So the question is, do I have enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent? And if so, state what theorem it is. So go ahead, think about this for a second. Pause the video if you need to. And here's the answer. Yes, they are congruent because I have a side, an angle, and another side. Same thing here. So that means I have SAS, and yes, they are congruent. So that's my answer for this first one. By the way, if I want to write that the triangles are congruent, then it would not be triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Why not? Because when you say this, you're saying side A matches with side X, side B matches with side Y, and side C matches with side Z. And that is not true. Because just look at this. If anything, I'd say A matches to Z because it's got the angle there, and B probably matches to X because it's touching the, the one tick mark and therefore C has to match Y. So in other words, since A matches Z, B matches X, and C matches Y, the correct way of writing this would be triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ZXY. And there's our answer. Now, by the way, you can reorder these however you want. For instance, I can say triangle BCA is congruent to X, and then Y, and then Z to match it with B, C, A. And so there's another correct answer. There's a bunch of correct answers depending on how you orient it, and your teacher will accept all of them, so any of them would be considered correct. Now let's move on to the second one I have for us today. These two triangles are gonna be in a bow tie shape. I have J, K, M, and then O, N, and they share point M. And I'm gonna tell you, these sides are congruent, these angles are congruent, and my question is, do I have enough here to say that the triangles are congruent? And if so, which triangle congruency theorem would I use? Well, if we look at this right now, clearly I have an angle, I have a side, but that's it, I don't have anything else. So in other words, I'd be tempted to say, no, they're not congruent, except I do have vertical angles at M. And what do vertical angles mean? It means that even though I didn't mark it, you need to know that those angles are congruent. In other words, I have angle, angle, side here. Angle, angle, side. So that means they are congruent. And that is our final answer. By the way, if you ever wrote SAA, I believe you would get points off for that because even though it is a side angle angle, that's not what we call it, we call it AAS. So at that point, it really depends on how your teacher's feeling that day, whether or not they take points off for you. But then how would I say that the triangles are congruent? I would say J matches up with N, M matches up with M itself, and that means K has to match up with O. So for instance, I'll say triangle J, M, K, is congruent to triangle N, M, O. And that's one of the many different combinations that would work here. So that's it for that one. And now I just have two more I wanna look at. 
For this one, I have some kind of diamond shape. We will call it E, F, G, and H. And I'm going to tell you that these angles, E and H, are congruent, and side EF is going to be congruent to side FH. So the question is, do we have enough information to say these are congruent? Go ahead, pause the video if you need to, think about it, and when you're ready to see the answer, unpause. So, right now we only have an angle and a side, but you forget that, again, we're sharing something, we're sharing a side in the middle, so I get the second side right there. But as you know, SSA is not a triangle congruency theorem, and there's no other information we have, so we have to say that the triangles are not congruent. And if you thought that this angle was congruent to that angle, or maybe F was congruent to that F, you'd be incorrect. There's not enough information to declare that. And so for that reason, not congruent is the answer. And then we just have one more for us today. It's going to be triangle Q, T, R, and S. I put the right angle there for both triangles. And I know that QT is congruent to TS. Now the question is, is this enough to say the triangles are congruent? What do you think? Well, there's two roads you can go down for this one. Number one, you can say, I have a side. The right angle is an angle that's congruent. And you might even say, I get this second side that's shared. So this is SSA, not looking too good. Until you remember that this is a special case. It's the right angle, which means I don't do sides and angles. Instead, I say hypotenuse, and this shared one, TR, is a leg of the triangle. So in other words, I have HL, hypotenuse and leg. So the triangles are congruent. And again, if I wanted to write that the triangles are congruent, I need to recognize that for the left triangle, Q is going to match S on the right triangle. T for the left triangle matches the T on the right and R for the left matches the R for the right. So this time there's two shared letters. And I'm going to write that triangle QTR is congruent to triangle STR. And there we go. That's all we need to write for that one. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.